Shalom. Today we are continuing the pairing, the comparing of the Chamesh Megillot, the five scrolls, with the five books of Moses. Today we're going to touch on Lamentations, which is called Echa in Hebrew. We're going to compare the book of Lamentations to the book of Numbers. We find that both books have themes of disobedience and its consequences. Another thing we will see is a concept from Job 3.25, For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. So we will see amongst the people of Israel that the certain things that they were afraid of are the things that actually played out with them later in their history. One thing that ties these two books together is the fast of the fifth month, which we read about in Zechariah 8.19. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, and the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness, and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love the truth and peace. These are not uh, biblically enjoined fasts. However, we see that they were being practiced at the time of Zechariah. The fast of the fifth month is known as the ninth day of the month of Av, the ninth of Av. And here is a list of things which have happened specifically on that day. The evil report of the spies is not documented, the timing in the calendar in Torah, but according to legend, this happened on this day. Everything else that is on this list is documented historically by the calendar. It's almost like God is trying to get his people's attention. So we see the report of the spies is related in Numbers 13.32. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. Even though God had promised to give the land to them, they became afraid and they brought an evil report. They said that the land eats up its inhabitants. In Lamentations, we see that it is actually the Lord Adonai who was swallowing up the habitations of Jacob in later times. Lamentations 2.2 Adonai hath swallowed up all the inhabitants of Jacob, and hath not pitied. He hath thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He hath brought them down to the ground. He hath polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. The opening of both books speaks of a great number of people. In Lamentations 1.1, 1, 1, How doth the city sit solitary that was full of people? How has she become a widow? She that was great among the nations and princess among the provinces, how she has become a tributary. The book of Numbers is actually not called Numbers. In Hebrew, it's called Bamidbar, talking about the wilderness wanderings. But it opens up with the names of all the tribes and the heads of the tribes and the people that are uh, counted in the census according to the command. Numbers 1 2. Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, after their families, by the house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles. The book of Lamentations is also called Kina in the Jewish literature. This word means a wailing, a dirge, or an elegy. It appears, for example, in 2 Samuel 1 17, via Konin David et Hakina Hazot. Al Shaul the Al Yehonatan Beno, and David is wailing this dirge uh, as a result of the death of Saul and Jonathan. Lamentations is obviously a book of wailing, but we'll see there's lots of wailing that's going on in Numbers as well. In Numbers 11, and when the people complained, it displeased Yahweh, and Yahweh heard it, and His anger was kindled, and the fire of Yahweh burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. Whence should I have flesh to give unto these people? 
for they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. In Numbers 14, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God that we had died in this wilderness? Again, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me, and the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land. And Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. Again in Numbers 16 and 17, For which cause both thou and thy company are gathered together against Yahweh, and what is Aaron, that ye murmur against him? And it shall come to pass that the man's rod, whom I shall choose, shall blossom, and I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. Numbers 20. And the people chode, as an old King James word, it means contended or quarreled with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before Yahweh. This is the water of Merivah, because the children of Israel strove with Yahweh, and he was sanctified in them. One thing they are consistently complaining about is the lack of food. In Numbers 11.4, Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving, so the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We see the same problem in Lamentations 2.12. They say to their mothers, Where is corn and wine? when they swooned as the wounded in the streets of the city, when their soul was poured into their mother's bosom. Numbers 20, verse 5. And wherefore have you made us to come up out of Egypt, to bring us in unto this evil place? It is no place of seed, or of figs, or of vines, or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. And again in Lamentations 4, 4. The tongue of the sucking child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst, the young children ask bread, and no man breaketh it unto them. So in Numbers, they actually had food to eat, and they had water to drink, but they complained. But in the fullness of time, in Lamentations, they have no food due to the siege of Jerusalem. Another theme, which is in both books, is Yahweh's mercy. Numbers fourteen eighteen, Yahweh is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. In Lamentations 3, we read, It is of Yahweh's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So Yahweh is the God of second and third and fourth and fifth chances. And here are some examples from Numbers. In Numbers 9, 6, and 7, there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by a dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back that we may not offer an offering of Yahweh in his appointed season among the children of Israel? We need to understand the importance of celebrating the Passover. The Passover represents the coming out of the house of bondage, out of the house of sin, and beginning to walk a walk with the Lord. If you do not celebrate a spiritual Passover, uh, which I guess most people would call being born again, if you do not make a commitment to the Lord, there is no point to keeping any of the rest of the commandments. We are saved by grace through faith, but then there are works to do afterwards. If we do not begin by making the commitment to the Lord to walk his walk, to have him be our king, to have him be our Lord, then there is no reason to walk in any commandments. Just as the Israelites walked out of Egypt through the sea, and then to Mount Sinai to, to receive the teaching and instructions, we must make a commitment to walk a walk with God on a daily basis, and then we can go and practice his teaching and instructions. So this is why the Passover is the first feast. It's listed. It is the beginning of the feast, 
because without it, you are not walking with the Lord. You have not made that commitment. So it's important that people have an opportunity, if they miss their chance, to get another chance, which Yahweh provides. After Moses prays about it, he gets this instruction. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto Yahweh, the fourteenth day of the second month at even, they shall keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So we get a second chance, according to Torah, for coming into the relationship and making Yahweh our king. Another example of a second chance is given in Numbers 27, talking about the daughters of Zelochachad. And they come to Moses and they say, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not of the company of them that gathered themselves against Yahweh in the company of Korah, but he died in his own sin and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away with from among his family, because he hath no son? Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. And God grants their request. The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass under unto his daughter, so they can still receive the inheritance. Another problem that we see is that people have become polluted, spiritually polluted, as a result of blood. Lamentations 4, 14, and 15. They have wandered as blind men in the streets. They have polluted themselves with blood, so that men could not touch their garments. They cried unto them, Depart ye, it is unclean. Depart, depart, touch not. When they fled away and wandered, they said among the heathen, They shall no more sojourn there. Yahweh has already given us an opportunity to be cleansed from this problem in Numbers 19 concerning the para aduma, the red heifer. This is the ordinance of the law which Yahweh has commanded, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that, you, that they bring a red heifer without blemish, in which there is no defect, and on which a yoke has never come. Then the heifer shall be burned in his sight. Its hide, its flesh, its blood, and its offal shall be burned. And the priest shall take the cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast them into the midst of the fire, burning the heifer. Continuing in Numbers 19, Then a man who is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and store them outside the camp in a clean place. And they shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for the water of purification. It is for purifying from sin. One more idea that we'll touch on here. From Numbers 23, from the prophecies of Balaam. For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone. This is the word badad. And shall not be reckoned among the nation. Balaam sees how special the Hebrew people are. In all his prophecies, he cannot curse them. He only speaks good things about them, how, how peaceful they are and how they will excel and even bringing prophecies of the Messiah. But they are people that are to dwell alone, to dwell apart from the rest of the nation. However, going back to Lamentations 1, we see how doth the city sit solitary, again, Badad, that was full of people. The people now are entirely reckoned among the nations. They have, they have gone into captivity, and they are no longer solitary. They are no longer a people set apart. But we see now that the city is sitting set apart and alone, waiting for the return of her people. Next time we will go on to Kohelet, Ecclesiastes. Until next time, Tasimita Inayim al Hashemayim. Keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.